Hello and welcome back to Picks and Portraits. Now, it's finally October, my favorite time of year, and to celebrate, we're dedicating this month to horror and Halloween-themed content. In this video, we're going to be looking at the work of puppeteer and stop-motion animator Ladislaw Starovich, who frequently used taxidermic insects and other small animals as the stars of his films. Stop-motion techniques in film are as old as the medium itself. Early artists would often use stop-trick photography to create the illusion of actors and objects appearing or disappearing. This can be played for comedic effect, but also lends itself nicely to horror. One of the earliest examples of stop-motion animation as we understand it is 1907's The Haunted Hotel, directed by J. Stuart Blackton. Now, we've talked about Blackton's contribution to animation on here before, and with this film, he continued expanding the medium. In its most famous scene, invisible spirits prepare a meal for a traveler. The Haunted Hotel would be remade the following year as The House of Ghosts by Segundo de Showman, with additional scenes featuring this horrific monster. In these early examples, stop motion was used to enhance live-action films. They were special effects. For the first fully stop-motion film, we need to look to Russia. Ballet dancer and choreographer Alexander Shuryev had become the first Russian animator by happenstance, when he sketched out and staged several routines using traditional and stop-motion techniques between 1906 and 1909. Now what I find interesting about this is that his work was lost until 1995, and probably would have never been screened publicly. He did it less for expression, and more to study human movement. But at the same time he was experimenting, someone else was making similar discoveries separately. Russian-born Polish Ladislaw Sterovich was the director of the Museum of Natural History in Countess Lithuania when he began making short documentaries. He aspired to create one of two stag beetles fighting, but found his subject would die when exposed to light, given the fact that they were nocturnal. After seeing Emil Cole's animated matches, he decided he could simply animate the dead bugs. Noting the creative potential, Staderwich began staging short plays, with the bugs acting out complex narratives. The only surviving film from this early period is 1910's The Beautiful Lacanita, in which two male bugs fight for the affection of a female bug. While the subjects of his films are not inherently scary, some are actually quite heartwarming, I do think the idea of reanimating a dead animal is pretty morbid. He injected them with embalming fluid and replaced their legs with wire that allowed articulated movement. Despite a lack of voice and facial gestures, Staderich gets an incredible amount of emotional range out of his puppets. Some critics were so amazed by these films, they were convinced the bugs were alive and trained to perform. This was years before anthropomorphic animals were appearing in cartoons, and even though there is a high novelty value here, these shorts are far from one note. Staderich's puppets were used to communicate human traits and emotions, and his films explored topics other early animators wouldn't touch. My favorite is The Cameraman's Revenge from 1912. In it, bugs paint, drive automobiles, go to nightclubs, and commit adultery. The props and sets are beautifully designed and create an immersive environment for the insects to interact with. Staderich manages to convey both romance and lust just by shot composition and setting. One affair we see through a keyhole and another open before a fireplace. Again, these are insects. Staderich's work was so incredible it earned him decoration by Nicholas II, the final emperor of Russia, whose government was overthrown during the revolution of 1917. The Russian film industry had sided with the Tsar, and following the revolution, Staderich and his family evaded the Red Army and fled for Paris, where he would spend the rest of his life and career. While The Tale of the Fox is perhaps his best known and regarded film from this later period, I'd instead like to look at 1933's The Mascot, as I find it fits our theme just a bit better. It is the story of a stuffed dog, made of cloth and leather, that gets separated from its owner in its journey back to her. It's deceptively adorable, as during this adventure, the dog, Fetish, has to flee a nightmarish hellscape. In what is known as the Devil's Ball sequence, several horrifying puppets attack Fetish under the command of the Devil. As he did with insects, Starwitch lends character to each of these creatures. He was a master of expressive movement, and every character, no matter how small their role, has a distinct personality. Ladislaw Starovich was an innovator, whose work inspired several artists over the next century, many of whom worked within the genre of horror. His influence can be seen as early as Willis O'Brien and as recently as Tim Burton. I think the reason stop motion works so well in horror is because, though expressive, it's still a natural movement. There is something unsettling about it. Unlike traditional animation, puppets are tangible. They exist in a physical space. Stop motion allows them or other objects to move on their own. It brings the inanimate to life. I will post links in the description below if you want to explore Ladislaw Starovich more, and if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't, and check out some of our other videos, like our recent Sleepcore stream. It was supposed to be a marathon of monster movies, but became a double feature thanks to some copyright issues, but no matter, we have plenty of Halloween programming lined up, so stay tuned for that. And as always, thanks for watching.